Where did you start with Dodstrong Performance? What were some of your first steps to, I guess, launching the business? So first steps. So I did go out and get my, my set throat floor as a 19 year old. Did, did the personal training just out of a, a local gym for a short set. Then after that, I decided I wanted to go into the degree, but I also actually did the massage course and got back into working with teams as a sports trainer. Right. And yeah, yeah, because I was actually tossing up between where I was going to try and go become physio. And I felt like the massage and the sports trainer may have helped with that. And then throughout my massage course, I was kind of thinking that I found out that basically strong conditioning coaches have a, a really big part to play in return to play, like yourself, please. And also, yeah, the rehab kind of side of things, working with other allied health professionals. You mentioned Nathan Harris at the start, and for, for me, he was massive because I probably wouldn't have a career without him. He found me sports training at Eric Football Club and, you know, doing the massage and rub downs there and all the taping. Yep. And he was the development coach, and he was like, you know, so you're doing this at the moment, but what do you want, actually want to do? Because I'm sure this isn't where you want to end up. And I was like, yeah, well, fine enough. Yeah, I got my first gig with, I think, Metro kind of championships we had. With, there was, yeah, it was Casey Demons. Then it was Stingrays. Now it's back at the Southeast Juniors. Yeah. Really lucky to basically have just kept on kept on saying yes and putting myself in the, in the best opportunity. But going back to your question, I, I think it's about that, about that networking, saying yes to, to putting yourself in the right opportunity and just making sure that, yeah, you just go out there and, and coach and find opportunities to coach because that's where you're really going to learn is, is just getting out there and um, applying that trade. I think the biggest roadblocks has been just, I guess, playing the same discipline within the business, but we don't realize how much there is in terms of like tracking finances, even emailing, creating like lead templates and sorry, lead magnets and yeah. trying to get comments and trying to get, yeah, just trying to generate some buzz and yeah. Also how to, I guess, how to sell without selling out either. Yeah. It's, it's been a really big thing for Probably me. Probably one of the biggest challenges for us coaches. Oh, I'm sad. Like I'm saying that for you know, all coaches, training coaches, practical coaches are in it to other people to help as best as you can. We're first. Probably our association with sales or is that it's, it's cheesy, but ultimately for, for us to make the biggest impact with people that we truly believe we can help, they need to be able to be sold on for the program. What's the hardest phase do you think for a coach to set up of those three, if we break it down to marketing sales and then the programming coach, where you spend the most amount of time for a new business, but just launching, I'd say you, you maybe you're in it, you can see that just launched the business and they're putting those systems in place or perhaps they've been going for a year, but they haven't quite now their processes down. What, what's the hardest and what do you think is the most effective to, from a, a, a revenue point of view? Ultimately, like you said, it's a business, you got to make money. Yeah. Well, I still think obviously the, like, delivering the service still probably needs to be paramount and, and still making sure that that's probably a premium. That's premium. Yeah. Because especially... I spoke out the other day, I, f I feel like the competition is definitely rising in, okay. in, in the private sector in terms of uh, delivering that service. So you want to make sure you're up to scratch on that and then the rest of it comes. And, and what's good about, you know, the marketing that I do so far has been, nothing's really been scripted. Most of my marketing that's actually gone off with, with Mitch has been me down at community level, just coaching. Yeah. And, and doing what it's been almost like a vlog style, yeah, which, which has been really easy for me. What have you found the biggest value from a, as a strong coach, whether it be from a league sport point of view or for your own business? Yeah. So, and part of that as well, yeah, did that 30 day challenge and that had a bit of a system around building those business foundations. By the time I got into that, I was lucky enough to have already done bits of it, but there was definitely some good reminders. I think YouTube was also on that as well. And that was something I did. Yeah, start up because of that. And yeah, the dashboard was just good for me to have a topic and have a resources that I can go back to. But like the things that are invaluable is, is probably the, the phone job conversation, especially around, you know, getting a job in pro sport and how to interview for a job in pro sport. You know, I, you know, would feel comfortable to obviously send a resume to you or, or feel like, you know, there's this job going, you know, how do you think I place? What do you think I should? Almost, almost getting coached in, in terms of that. It is absolutely invaluable.